with the amount of all the different crises that are taking place right now in this country and this world, there's one that keeps getting dropped from mainstream media. And that's something we're going to talk about today. And that is on baby formula and the whole crisis that is going on with this. There are probably... Hundreds of thousands of people out there that are dealing with this on a daily basis. And you may be one of them. And we're going to talk a little bit about what is going on, what is taking place, and what the solution to the problem could be if somebody would just pay attention. So, with that being said, folks, I'm sure there's a lot of you out there, even part of this prepping community, that in one way, shape, or form either is affected by this or possibly you are dealing with it on a daily basis, driving from store to store trying to find the formula that you need for your infant, which is ridiculous, right? When it doesn't have to be this way. Now, there are some things I want to cover here. And... Just so everybody does realize, between 2010 and 2020, all right, on average, there was about three and a half million babies born each year. Now, that's a lot of baby formula that's going to be needed. Now, granted, a lot of women may be able to breastfeed or they may do other types of things, um, goat's milk, cow's milk. It just depends. But a lot of this is all stemmed from what took place about four months ago. This is how long we've been dealing with this whole problem and situation. Abbott, which is one of the largest producers of baby formula, and they produce about 40% of the nation's powdered formula, just so everybody knows, all right? And much of it comes from the Sturgis factory in Michigan that has had all these different problems and chaotic things that have been taking place. Um, they did reopen and then they shut down again. Unbelievable, right folks? Before they did shut down, you know, that one plant produced the 40% of the nation's baby formula. And that's like putting all your eggs in one basket, right? As of June 24th, the Biden administration is still seeking a full picture on ongoing problems with the infant formula supply. More than four months after the key plant shut down, sparking shortages and a nationwide crisis. So it took them this long to try to figure out, okay, what's going on? Why is this happening? Because obviously, <laughs> they're still seeking out information. They need a full picture. The full picture is, well, guess what? There's not enough formula out there for all these babies. A lot of babies need special formula. And what are they doing about it? Well, they've been trying to airlift stuff in and everything else, but then it has to go through the whole FDA approval and all this. And then it starts getting all moved around to different parts of the country and different areas and different stores. But it's not like the shelves are full. The last time I was in the store last Saturday, I went to my local Walmart here. They didn't have anything on the shelves, period. They were empty. I think there was like one or two cans. Really? Where's the help at, folks? Where's the help, Mr. President? That's what we need to be asking. In a sense, that is where the FDA and Abbott both have dropped the ball in this whole situation that we are going through. They could have recalled the products without shutting down the facility. All right? They do that. They do recalls all the time without shutting down the facilities. So when you shut down the facility, that just... That just automatically threw a curveball into the whole manufacturing part of making the baby formula. Back on 
May 13th, DFDA Commissioner Robert Claff promised the baby formula shortage will improve in a matter of weeks. That was on May 13th. Back on June 16th, the FDA commissioner said that the agency had been informed about the stoppage again at the Abbott plant in Michigan, but that it was not expected to have much impact. Really? Everything is empty on the shelves. <laughs> it's just mind-blowing, right? Given increased imports of formula as well as production by Abbott and other manufacturers. Quote, unquote, this is what this dude had to say. While this is an unfortunate setback, sounds like a perfect government um, saying, doesn't it? Unfortunate. And a reminder that natural weather events can also cause unseen supply chain disruptions. I want to re reassure consumers that all of government work to increase supply means will have more than enough product to meet the current demand. Explain to me then why the stores are still empty and people can't get the formula for their kids, their infants. Stop lying to us, folks. You know, I mean, I think they think that we're all stupid out here. We don't believe their BS. This is a big problem in this country of getting baby formula for all these infants. These little human beings, they can't speak, they can't do anything, they can't defend themselves, they can't speak for themselves. All they can do is cry because maybe they're hungry. But just remember, it's an unfortunate setback. Now on June 24th, the FDA commissioner, Mr. Robert there, he told lawmakers on Capitol Hill that he still believes the U.S. will soon have a surplus of infant formula production, despite the ongoing challenges and the Abbott plant's second shutdown, that everything will all be fine. Now, there's 23 facilities in the United States. The reason for a lot of these problems and stuff, because all these other facilities aren't producing as much to try to pick up, you know, hey, the slack from Abbott and the huge Michigan plant here, all right, is corporate monopolies, poor quality control, and federal regulations. But they're working on solving the problem. But Biden says... They're still trying to understand it. I don't know. You folks tell me. What do you think that's going on? Put it in the comments below. These people are just either dumb or it's part of their plan. It's one of the other folks. There's just three companies that control the entire infant formula marketing in the United States of America. Three companies. That's why it's a monopoly. Typically, you know, the U.S. buys almost no infant formula from another country. And the reason being is because there's a 17.5% tariff on most formulas that is brought in from other countries. So it makes it, well, it cuts into their profit, if you get what I'm saying. It's clear that the U.S. has basically closed off its markets to imports. They don't want to import it. These three main companies want the control. They want to control how much they're making. They want to help control how much product they're pushing out. And they want to control the whole market. Three companies. There is no reason why we can't be importing baby formula from Canada plants, which would be a very easy thing for us to do, and it'd be very easy for the FDA to inspect 
the products, but we don't do it. The FDA says once the Michigan facility and the factory reopens again, it will take about two weeks to restart the production. And then it's going to take another six to eight weeks to bring the plant up to full capacity again. I'm guessing that means if they don't get a, another rainstorm or something to shut them down. It just seems like, you know, it's one thing after another with this whole baby formula thing. And parents out there are paying the price. Actually, the ones paying the price are the poor little infants because they don't have formula to feed their little bodies. It's not like you can feed them a steak and baked potato, you know? This is something that they need, they need to have. So since my solution to this whole problem is, for one, there needs to be more than just three companies out there that are actually doing all this and producing these formulas because obviously they can't handle it. And if one little plant goes down, out of the 23 facilities that they have, all of a sudden we have a national crisis. Why isn't somebody looking into that problem? And then you turn around and I believe that they should have more plants, maybe more people that make these products rather than just three companies. Or if you want to stay with the three because we don't want to rock the boat, right? Turn around and maybe you need to build more facilities throughout the country to handle if there is a problem at one of your plants when you have to shut it down so the other ones can pick up the slack and still keep the shelves full, product rolling, and keeping the babies fed. It's not rocket scientists. I mean, it's common sense. When you're dealing with an infant and you're dealing with some little baby's life here that has to have special formula in order to survive. So I'm Survival Preparedness for Beginners. Thank you for joining me on this video today. Make sure you put in the comments below what your feelings are on this whole situation because I think there's just a bunch of BS going on. Biden doesn't have a clue. He's still trying to figure out what's going on after four months and... I guess if it was an ice cream factory, he might be kind of happy. He might know what's happening if he couldn't get his ice cream. So until next time, folks, you all stay prepping. Keep your head above water. We all got to get through this together. And I'll catch you all on the flip side.